So happy Valentine's Day to those of you who are watching this on February 14th, but in celebration of a day that has been told to be romantic, I thought I would do an update on my point of view on romantic relationships. I did a couple videos a few years ago. I was in a different frame of mind. Uh, I want to update that with this idea of what does it mean to make the decision to stay human. So we're going to take a big old deep breath and I will see you on the other side. So this is the break before we get into the other portion of the video. Just a couple updates. Uh, as you can see outside, the weather has been brutal. I have not really made any progress on the horse trailer. The good news is I do have my online digital store up. So the books are for sale. The membership is still running, going well. And if you want to support, links are below. If you want to participate and do the work, same place. And with that, let's get to the heart of the matter. So the last time I made videos on romance was a couple years ago when I had just started having people watch me here on YouTube and well I was pretty frustrated because of the number of people who were watching these videos like it was some kind of personal ad of me looking for a romantic relationship and that sort of kicked off my never-ending struggle here on this point of view environment and uh, but at the same time I was still really working on different things within myself and I've come a long way on my perspective of romantic relationships but I wanted to talk to today about not me but just as a general discussion on this idea of how different it is you know romance over 50 especially a new relationship is so different as I've thought about it than it was when I was, you know, younger. And also, you know, when I talk about this idea to stay human, the very core of our humanity, what makes us human, is our desire and our ability to connect. So in the last video, I seemed a little anti-relationship. And that isn't true at all. I am not the poster child for normal women. There's nothing about me <laughs> that's normal. And I am terrible at romantic relationships. But that's why I don't talk about it. I don't have any area of expertise on this. But what I do know from my work as a social worker has wildly influenced me uh, in my desire or if I ever would have another romantic relationship. And it's very different when you're over 50. So this is just some stuff that I observed while I was working with older women and as I've observed in myself as I've gotten older and I've had uh, the thoughts if I was to enter into a romantic relationship how differently I look at it. And the number one thing that I've learned in my time on YouTube and in my professional life was that uh, there's a huge generational gap. You know, there's this, I, I quantify it in 2020 about an over 60, under 60. It's sort of that transition of uh, second wave baby boomers into Generation X is that it's changed for us. It is not about a role. It's not about the traditional male-female roles. Uh, where the woman follows the man and he leads in the traditional way. And, and that's the way it used to be. And that isn't true anymore. So there's this huge problem right now and that there's so many different ways men and women of every age look at romantic relationships. But there is a profound difference in this generational gap. And uh, it makes it difficult when you fall into that, you know, 50, 60, 70 age range because it's all messed up. It's all overlapping. And so it's really important to know what's important to you. But what's more important than I learned as a social worker was at the time when I was younger, uh, women were still in that traditional mindset. And so they felt afraid, like they had to be married. And uh, often their husbands would die because we know most men uh, died before women. And they would get into these relationships more about being afraid of being alone than they were really connected to the person and find that that other person would get sick and drain their savings and they would just become a caretaker. And it's very different if you've been with somebody 30 or 40 years being with them in their older years than when it's a brand new relationship and you're basically signing up to be a caregiver. 
uh, and losing potentially all your savings. And so that really seared into my mind when I was younger about never wanting to be involved with somebody that was significantly older than me because as we age, it becomes infinitely more profound. And as I said, you know, the essence of us as human is wanting to be connected, but that young romantic relationship is about hormones and procreation and a family and a perpetuation of the species. You know, in our post-parenting years, romance takes on an entirely different meaning. And I know from where I sit, infinitely more practical. And that's where I see the biggest shift because, uh, Women don't need to be with men in the same way. And we have, most of us, <laughs> and it's just very different when women come into relationships now, uh, financially independent or not using financial safety and stability as their prime criteria. In fact, in my time in my little tiny trailer, it has been shocking to me the number of men of all ages that somehow are looking to me to take care of them. And I'm like, do you see how I'm living? Uh, shocking. So there's this reversal that's happening also where men are looking to women of all ages to take care of them. Uh, and these are the hard questions that we have to ask ourselves, that why do we want to be in a romantic relationship? And that is so different at every age. But, you know, when we're young, they say that men are about four years, you should marry about four years older than you because men are more emotionally less mature than younger women. And that makes sense, right, when you're having a family. But at this age, if you're not a grown up by now, you got bigger problems than a romantic relationship. Uh, but it also means you're coming into relationships with so much more baggage. And that baggage is heavy. Uh, and it gets more difficult if you don't do the personal work about why things went the way they did to just keep blaming the partner. And I see that happen a lot. Uh, I see a lot of men and women stuck in their past. I don't know about you, I am nothing, almost nothing like I was, you know, 30 years ago. And I've often said, had I married any of the men that I was involved with in my 20s and 30s, we'd be divorced because I am so different than I was. And my personal goals were never to get married and have kids. So I had a very different agenda. But once you're in your post parenting years, that getting married to have kids is over and now if we just want to be blunt, I will say this, it's much more practical and business-like. You know, what are we both bringing to the party? Uh, how do we look at aging? What are our financial situations? What are we expecting of the other? And the other really big one is health. And uh, that to me is the biggest red flag is somebody's health. Because uh, once you get into your 50s, I have been shocked by the number of people that have a debilitating disease. I did that video where two out of every, well, four out of every five people over 50 in America have some kind of chronic disease. 80% of those have two or more chronic diseases. And we all know that chronic disease leads to heart attacks, stroke, uh, all those things that are very debilitating, but that you can live a long time with. And, you know, as I'm saying all these things, I realize there's nothing romantic about any of this and I think there's a big shift that as we have a lot of life experience I don't know about you but you get to that place where you know you can live alone and you also know you can recover if a relationship doesn't work out and it gets harder and harder to have that real hardcore commitment and the more that you invest in somebody the more likely you are to stay with them but but what I witness is that almost nobody's interested in investing in anybody. There's just a superficial aspect to it. So we're in a point of time where everything is off the table and everything is on the table. And uh, what I have done with myself is, you know, I've made the decision that 
if I was to enter into a romantic relationship, I would look at it in a very, very, very different way than I did when I was younger. Because one of the things I learned was that love is not enough. And you can love somebody tremendously, but it's not enough to conquer our values, uh, you know, the practical aspects of our life, our goals, uh, you know, and our baggage. You know, some people bring a lot of other people with them into the relationship. And that may or may not work. And so if you really want to have a romantic relationship and you're over 50, I believe there's a huge industry around that. There's a lot of room for us to learn and grow and figure out how to connect again. Uh, you know, my personal experience with people emailing me was how uh, difficult it was for men to uh, even say what they mean or what they wanted and they wanted me to do the work around that and uh, that isn't of interest to me and so we're in this really interesting period of time but I would say that at our core we want to be connected but there's also a big part of us that wants to be happy and it's very difficult to be happy with somebody in a relationship when there's real differences in values in goals uh, in beliefs uh, and in expectations. And so the most important thing for anybody that's really wanting a romantic relationship is that willingness to take a hard look at who you are and are you somebody that someone would want to be with. And I will tell you from my perspective, and this is the female, the feminine, you know, as I've gotten older, uh, I am infinitely more insecure about what's going on <laughs> here. In fact, just to be uh, curious, I thought, you know, I haven't put makeup on, so I tried, I bought some new mascara, because the last time I tried to put it on, it was so old, there was crispy, uh, and I can barely do it. It's all over the place. <laughs> how much I don't like wearing makeup, how, uh, you know, it was fun to be attractive and how much more difficult it is to be attractive in the world market today uh, and how much that interferes with, if you can see my, my work boots, right? So uh, I put on something that I might have worn uh, to work or on a date once upon a time. <laughs> but the reality is, is I have my cow pants and my cow shoes on. Uh, I will promptly take any makeup off and uh, it's just very difficult in a lifestyle like mine to be involved with somebody romantically. Uh, and I, these are the kinds of things that we're all thinking in our head. You know, I would never bring somebody into my trailer. Uh, even in this horse trailer, it will be too small. Uh, and a lot of people assume because you're living the way you live, you're a traveling nomadic person, you want to be with somebody who's traveling and nomadic. And that isn't necessarily true. I would never want to be nomadic in this lifestyle with a romantic partner. So it's really important to ask those questions and to not assume and to understand that we're dealing with a whole different set of insecurities. Uh, we are changed as individuals. Uh, you know, if you're like me, you've been alone a very long time. Old habits die hard. It would be extremely difficult for someone like me to have somebody come into a small space. I don't think I could do it. Uh, and you know that about yourself. So I think it's good to have romantic relationships. But the reality is, is the older that we get, the harder it is without a lot of effort and work. And you know one of my main mantras is do the work. And everything I do talks about how to be uh, healthier, stronger uh, as a human individually. But those same characteristics apply to how we would be together, uh, both in romantic relationships, family relationships, friendships, community itself. Uh, that we're having to learn a different way to be human because the old way doesn't work anymore. What's going on right now is making everybody miserable and how it will be in the future I think is being written right now. And when I say the decision to stay human, I believe humans are meant to be connected to each other in small groups and family units in local communities and it's never been more difficult to achieve that. And just a few minutes ago uh, the guy who runs the cows here just drove by and 
all year long I've been furious with some of the things that have been going on around here but I have to bite my tongue because my survival depends on us maintaining a relationship I need him he needs me and so even though we drive each other crazy in very many ways because survival is on the table we learn to get along and I think that's the missing ingredient because we have this belief that we can pay for what we need that some external entity whether it's social security the government some institution is going to swoop in and take care of us uh, we have this belief that we don't need each other and so therefore we're not committed to maintaining a relationship because our survival depends on it so that's just some thoughts. As I conclude this, it's just occurred to me that uh, I haven't replaced the vents and so there's wind in the background. <laughs> Yet again, because it's windy almost every single day. But deep breath. I hope that gives you something to think about this Valentine's Day. Good for you if you're in a happy, loving, fulfilling relationship. I think that's the best place for both people when everybody's winning within that uh, relationship in that family unit. When you win, we all win. And so that is always my goal for you. So links are below. We're going to take a deep breath and I will see you next time. But I wouldn't hold my breath that there'd be any changes in here. This is going incredibly slowly. Oh well, see you next time. <laughs>